and Tangella too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! And all creatures! And the creature gonna get you tonight! You better not turn out your bedroom light! He'll grab your head and give us such a bite! What in the world is she doing? She's modeling her invisible bikini. Isn't it lovely? She belongs on a fashion show runway. She belongs in a mental institution. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. Posing in her fashionable transparent swimwear is my enchanting housemate, Tangella. And the doubting Thomas over to this end would be my skeptical butler, Mr. Livingston. More like level-headed, one would say. And do we have a phantasmatically amazing show for you, first off film. Prepare to plunge into the peculiar and preposterous 1966 world of The Ghost in the Invisible Bikini, a fantastically frivolous film that fuses frights, frolics, and the fabulous. This feather-brained, fiendishly funny flick features a ghostly gal in a gossamer gown, a cast of comically kooky characters, and a beach-bound bash teeming with both the visible and the vanishing. Get ready for a raucous romp where the spectral and the sand-covered meet in a wild whirlwind of witty wraiths, invisible indiscretions, and belly-aching hilarity. Oh, I do wish you would cease with the alliteration. The grumpy old butler's personality is as pleasant as a porcupine's pillow, prickly and particularly poor in politeness. Join us to watch this amazing film, which we last presented two years and 22 days previously, will be Ghost Girl Boo. Don't give me that face. That's apparently the name on her certificate of birth. Onward, a fearless paranormal investigator with a penchant for uncovering otherworldly mysteries, Ghost Girl Boo is armed with her ghost hunting gadgets and unwavering determination whilst being dedicated to revealing the supernatural secrets hidden in the shadows. She'll tell us about some of her adventures, tell us about what we might find on the other side, and give us her opinion on tonight's film. So don't go away, for it shall most definitely be a brilliantly spooky night of ghostly phantom fright, right here on Creature Features. Oh, how lovely. Stay tuned. You dress like this every day. <laughs> Just when I like to blend in. <laughs> All right. Well, now you're blending in perfectly. <laughs> Thank I mean, you. you're in a spooky house and you have yes. a somewhat, it's kind of spooky. Although, you know, I expect you to do what's that dance that the Spanish ladies do with the castanets? <laughs> Next time. Next time? <laughs> yes. Time. Anyway, welcome to the show. Uh, I am with Ghost Girl Boo, which we're going to explain what that's all about in a moment. <laughs> but first, if you don't want to watch our show tonight, on channel four or ten is the Pink Panther, the 1964 version with uh, Peter Sellers, and uh, he plays Jacques Clouseau. Oh. I never knew his first name. I knew it was an Inspector Clouseau. Yes. But I didn't know it was Jacques Clouseau, and that sounds like Jacques Cousteau, mm -hmm. who was the famous, uh, di I think he invented scuba diving, did he not? <laughs> no, he invented the entire, yeah, like in World War II, he was like... A so, uh, yeah, switch over if you don't want to watch us, but uh, I, I think you'd rather watch us because we've got a great guest, a great movie, and uh, we're going to talk about ghosts. 
I love that subject. And we're going to talk about ghost movies. Of course. So ghost show, ghost movie. <laughs> so how does one get a name like Ghost Girl Boo? Yes, well, in the paranormal field, we all earn our nicknames. Uh, they are little treasures that are gifted to us. And mine is Boo. And I treasure it lovingly. <laughs> so being in the ghost industry, is yes. that not an overused term? That's a great question. You know, I don't think it can be overused if it's done with love. <laughs> Does anyone ever call you Boo Boo? Not yet. Uh, just Boo. <laughs> Ghost Girl Boo Boo yeah. sounds more like exotic. <laughs> right? Which I know is more the movie than no, myself. You do seance <laughs> and you're like, I'm Ghost Girl Boo Boo. <laughs> No. I'll have to add that on to my or resume boo, boo, now. Boo. Three of them. Two, three three of them. in a row. There right. you go. Ghost girl, boo, boo, boo. <laughs> so you've done ghost hunting. We're going to talk about that. Yes. And um, you've dabbled in other things as well, right? Well, yes. I uh, help out with the Napa ghosts. The right. Devin and Ellen, they're the right. best. Right. Our viewers yes. know them. Oh, of course. And I'm right. sure they'll be back soon. I hope so. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're always off doing ghost hunting. Oh, yes, and I'm usually along with them. Except today, because you're with us. Yes. All right, and we're going to watch the Ghost in the Invisible Bikini, and I understand you're familiar with this I film. I am familiar, yes, thank it's, you. You know, I, I, we've shown this a, a few years past. I have and seen. I remember this film because, mm -hmm. one, the Ghost in the Bikini is somewhat rather unusual. <laughs> no, she almost looks animated. Right? Yes, right. amazing for 1966. But all <laughs> kinds of surfing music. Yes, and... lots of dancing and singing, absolutely. Now, did you dance and sing as you watched? <laughs> I had to. All I right. think it's no, just no. Well, important. Well, if you want to get up and start dancing while we watch this one, it's perfectly fine. All right, well, let's get the film started. And when we come back, we're going to talk about ghosts. Thank you. All right, off we go. <laughs> the Ghost in the Invisible Bikini 1966. <laughs> Don't go away. It's so worth it. I think.
nursery, my dear. Looking lovely as usual. Hey, wait a minute. You're dead. You've been dead for 30 years. 32, Hiram Baby. Hiram Baby? <laughs> well, you look lovely just the same. Hiram, let me clue you in. You have a terrible problem. Good heavens, my dear girl. What problem could I possibly have? I'm very wealthy. I'm very healthy. And very dead. I beg your pardon? No need to. You're dead. Just like me. Oh? Oh. You know, I don't like this. I don't like this one tiny little bit. No one does, Hiram, baby. That's why I'm here, to help you get up there. Is there a chance for me? Uh-huh. What do I have to do? Well, now, why don't you just get out of your nice little coffin and I'll give you the scam. You have 24 hours in which to mastermind one good deed. If you want to spend eternity with me. Good deed? Good heavens, I'm a little out of practice. I wouldn't know where to begin. Well, I can't coach you. Yeah. It has to be your idea, pussycat. Oh, and another thing. You can't leave the crypt. I can't leave... Then how can I do a good deed? Well, anything you want done, I'll do. Ah. Oh, and if you're successful, there's a bonus in it for you. A bonus? Tell me, what is it? Well, uh, you'll notice there's a discrepancy in our ages. Well, since you mention it, if you look closely, um, well, yes. Well, you see, that's because I stopped aging when I was in the accident. And you, my poor friend, kept getting older and older. Never mind that. Tell me about the bonus. Well, the bonus is, if you succeed in doing one good deed, they promised you'd be young again. Young again? Oh, Cecily, my dear. Then once more, you and I could trip together hand in hand through the sweet-smelling fields of new-mown clover to enjoy the moonlight of a warm summer's night. Ugh, let's not get sickening, Chicky Baby. Time's a wasting. You've got to pull off a good deed, remember? As I know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Wait a minute, uh, How long have I been, uh, <coughs> dead? Mm, you're hardly cold. One week. One week? Then tomorrow, the reading of my will takes place. And if I know Reggie Ripper, my attorney, he'll try to keep all the money for himself. Now, what you have to do is to see that my rightful heirs get the money. That will be my good deed. Are you sure they'll make me young again up there? They never go back on their promise. Good. Now, the first thing for you to do is to try to get into my house. But how will we keep in touch with each other? We should have a walkie-talkie. I have something better. Do you remember the old crystal ball shtick? Ah, oh, it never worked. <laughs> Try it now. Not bad. Ah, the first of my heirs. Chuck Phillips. Not very bright, but a nice boy. Heir number two. Lily Norton. Not very bright either, but a beautiful figure. So I've been told. And there, number three, Myrtle Forbush. Now, what can I say about her in front of you? Ah, Reggie Ripper, my wicked attorney, and his vile sidekick, Jay Sinister Hulk. Really, my dear chap, when you threw in with me, I told you there might be some risks involved. I know, I know, and I'm game, but listen. Is this joint really haunted, like they say? Certainly not. Don't be ridiculous. Now, look here, Hulk. There's a million dollars involved in this estate, plus the house. And your job is to, uh, take care of the other heirs. Follow me? Yeah, I'm way ahead of you. The job will be done very neat and tidy, or my name ain't Jay Sinister Hulk. <laughs> my associates are on the way now. Well, I hope they get here soon. My guests are due in a minute. They will, they will. This is the greatest bunch of cutthroats I ever had the pleasure of working with. Excellent. Once they eliminate the other heirs, the fortune will be all mine. Uh, ours. Mine. Ours? Mine, old bean. What? 
your soul being. That, my dear Cecily, is the enemy. For my good deed, you're to harass them and help the young people. Gotcha, Hiram. Hmm. You better be leaving, my dear, but heirs are arriving for the reading of my will. As you say, Hiram. Wait a minute. The door's that way. But who needs it? This film confuses me. There's a couple of indiscrepancies. So, one, uh, Lily yes. died 30 years ago, which would put her back in 1930-something. Mm -hmm. But she talks like a girl from the 60s. She <laughs> says she said she called him Pussycat. Yes, just an up-to-date ghost. <laughs> no, it makes no sense. <laughs> and this, this room that's supposed to be Boris Karloff's tomb yes. has a sign that says... Hall of Terror, Hall of Horror, or something. Oh, yes. Hey, where is he? <laughs> Maybe it's an Easter egg we'll come across later. <laughs> yeah, she's she's pretty smart for oh. a ghost hunter. <laughs> no, all ghost hunters are smart. That was the thing. <laughs> anyway, so welcome back to the show. We are watching The Ghost in the Invisible Bikini with the wonderful Ghost Girl Boo. And I want to know how this whole ghost thing started. Absolutely. What got you into being a ghost hunter? Definitely. So we all have our stories. Mine, I believe I've had the gift my whole life. Um, psychic, I believe that when I look into someone's eyes, I can see their soul. And then in terms of the mediumship where I can communicate with spirit, um, it really came to fruition when I was 14. I moved into a haunted home and there was a little ghost boy. He never scared me. He was very sweet and he would play little hide and seek games with me and it just meant a lot. Got me into the field. A ghost boy got yes. you into ghost hunting. Yes, full circle. <laughs> so you're not really a ghost hunter. You're more of like a ghost companion. Yes. I believe it's so important to be friendly and kind. A lot of them had very tragic lives and afterlives. Right. So it's important to just show them that you're listening and care. So was this like a, an old haunted Victorian home? I wish I could say so, but no. He was telling me that he was uh, connected to the property rather than the home itself. So maybe there was a different home there at one time I maybe at one time so. there was a giant it could victorian. have been the victorian right. then oh. absolutely what city would this have been in can i say that yes. walnut creek <laughs> walnut creek yes so perhaps before they called it walnut creek it was like a walnut grove with a it creek was you're through, very right? much so right you know your history right. yes no <laughs> that could happen that can happen yes. so you ran into a ghost and you decided mm -hmm. okay i'm i'm Going to be I'm a ghost on board. Hunter. Yes, and uh, at the time, the shows, the only portrayal was screaming, yelling, running away. And I thought this can't be the only way that if there's spirits out there who just want someone to listen, then maybe I can be that person. So you've been doing this how long? Many years, <laughs> Many? as you can see. <laughs> do you do like the whole crystal ball thing? I do not myself, no. Mm. I go more the talking route <laughs> than the metaphysical oh, route. That's nice. That's <laughs> nice. And the outfit is not something you wear every day. You're just like... Oh, just for fun. But I thought fun. it would blend in kind of like the invisible theme. Oh, I see. <laughs> so you're dressing for the film. Very much you, oh, so, nice, yes. Nice, like and it was my mom's that. favorite color. Good nod oh, to her. Smart, <laughs> smart, be nice. All right. Let's get back to this film. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk some more about ghosts. All right, you guys stick around and we will see you on the other side of the break.
house and costume, neatly assembled. What goes on? A seance. I think it's only fitting to thank Mr. Hiram Stokely. Am I right, Buster? If you insist. Oh, I don't insist. But I get very mean when I'm cross, so sit down and be sociable. All right. I hope this works. I normally don't communicate with ghosts until midnight. Night rate's cheaper. <laughs> This is so silly. Why do we have to sit here? I'm surprised at you, Cookie. After all, Hiram invited us to come. We are his heirs. No one is officially an heir unless present at the reading of the will, and that doesn't happen until midnight. So if you'll kindly get on with it. All right. Let's start holding hands. I think I'm going to be sicker. Quiet, please. Ghosts do not like noises. Now. You'll all just close your eyes and concentrate. Oh, Hiram Stokely, we are all sitting around waiting for you. Dear sweet Lily Morton, Chuck Phillips, your respected attorney, Reginald Ripper, and me, Myrtle Forbush. Oh, please, won't you visit us, Hiram? We are so anxious to talk to you. If you hear my voice, give us a sign. <laughs> What's the... Oh! Oh, it, it's, a, it's a light! It's a no! <laughs> what a ridiculous way to send messages. Well, what's it say? What's it say? Is it from Hiram? Those who remain here tonight will not be around tomorrow. Wait a minute. Now, it's obvious someone's trying to scare us out of here. Oh, yes, and they succeeded. I'm leaving. But if you leave before they read the will, you forfeit your share. Uh, it seems I've reconsidered. Delighted. Uh, uh, Perhaps you'd better go on without me, Miss Forbush. Maybe I'm uh, interfering with your communications. Oh, all right, all right. Here, hold hands. Oh, oh. Have we displeased you, Hiram? What can we do to make you forgive us? Oh, please, speak to us, Hiram. Send us a friendly message. Friendly message? Good heavens. Everybody all right? Yeah, we're all right. And whoever did that, we're not scared! Speak for yourself, John. Oh, come now, let's not go blaming people for these strange happenings around here. This is a very old house, and, uh, well, chandeliers do fall. Oh, sure, all the time. And the mail arrives on knives that stick themselves into chairs and people. Sinister face, pay no attention to it, is just Malcolm, my butler. Terribly inefficient, I might add. We'll have to postpone the seance, that's all. Hiram Stokely would never show up with all that racket going on. Unless his ghost digs the Watusi. <laughs> I could have told you nothing would have come of it, Miss Forbush. After all, how could the old pirate in a few minutes come all the way up here from all the way down there? <laughs> Uh, you haven't told me yet uh, how you like my little nephew. Oh, I, 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 I didn't know you had any living relatives. Well, I don't, unless you count Gugu. Gugu? <laughs> how about you two? Uh, are you uh, similarly endowed, I mean, with uh, living relatives? Well, I don't see what difference it makes, but no. I see. 
This cuckoo appears to be a charming young lad. I'd like him to meet my daughter, Sinistra. Well, I... Sinistra! <laughs> you must be joshing. My dear young man, I am not a josher. Shall we? Delighted. Then there were two. Correction, one. I'm going to my room. Wait a minute. Now, we just met this morning. Now, I've heard of love at first sight, but never hate. Why? Because you're a fortune hunter. Me? A fortune hunter? Well, certainly. I, I mean, why would Hiram Stokely, a complete stranger, remember you in his will? Well, I don't know, but by the same token, why should he remember you? I mean, you never heard of him before either, did you? No. All right. Now, we both know someone's trying to scare us out of here. Now, if we team up, we'll be twice as strong. What do you say? All right, it's a deal. We will not be scared. A business relationship. Strictly business. Quite a turn you gave me there, Mr. Ripper. <laughs> hey, quite a turn. It's pretty good. <laughs> you get it? Time marches on, Miss Talk. And you sit here making insane jokes. Do you realize that I still have a full house? What's happened to your infernal helpers? Don't be impatient, boss. They'll be here. You told me that an hour ago. Mr. Hulk, say follow Highway 52, locate Miss Stokely House. Meet my train, okay? Well, what happened, House? Well, don't look at me. You're supposed to be the guy, chicken fat. No car, chicken fat. Me chicken fat. <laughs> Nifty, huh? Yeah. <laughs> How do you like this new bust up billboards game I invented? Oh, you're the greatest, boss. Yeah, no one rottener than you, boss. When something's rottener is invented, Eric Von Zipper will invent it. Right. And not only is it rotten, but it's nifty and safe. Anybody see any more billboards around here for us to bust up? Yeah, I think I see one over there, boss. Oh, yeah? Okay. Turn them over, group. Mmm. Fresh tracks. Four retreads. Me think we finally find the right trail. Right trail? You couldn't find the right trail from a plate of beans to your big fat mouth. Now get in here and let me drive. Okay, maybe change them luck, for instance. Good. Oh, shut up, monster. We're just as hungry as you are. <laughs> Oh, them wild ones. Must be on leave of absence from Late Late Show. Oh, nobody'd be on this mangy cow path if they weren't headed for the Stokely estate. Mush!
This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Oh, that's interesting. Have you heard of a product called Shinola? It's it's something you place on your shoes. Did you know this existed? I did not. Shinola. Yeah, I've heard the term bleep from Shinola, but uh, I've never seen the actual product. And they're showing feet. How horrid is this? They're showing feet for a shoe shine thing. Anyways, welcome back. We are going to do some mail because Ghost Girl Boo stepped away just for a moment, and uh, Tangela stepped in with uh, that thing. That is monstrous. It's got fangs. It's like that rabbit in Monty Python and the Holy yeah. Grail. It is. No, you're right. Anyway, what do you got for me, Mr. Livingston? We have a package from the Gold Coast of Australia. The Gold Coast of Australia. That's Queensland, is it not? Uh, I think it is. Look, it's... Oh, this stuff. It's from Miss Lisa Marie I guess that's for in you. Uh, Clear Island Waters. Clear Island Waters. That's a descriptive place. I wonder if the Quite. waters on that island are clear. Well, of course they are. It's called Clear Island Waters, silly man. You asked the question. I, I did you not. Know, it's a, it's a, oh, my goodness. There's all kinds of trinkets. There is uh, this, right? What is it? That's probably for you. And this is looks like an Australian flag, which we shall fly proudly. And what else? We've got, oh, look, Australian money. 20 Australian dollars. Hmm. That's like worth like 100 American dollars, I think, I if I know the exchange rate correctly. And a note which says... Dear Creature Features, I would like to thank you for reading our letter. I'm sending a gift from me and my son, John, $20 Australia for you, a dress for her. Well, let's see this dress. Oh my goodness, that's so fashionable. You think this is what fashionable women wear on the Gold Coast? I can see her wearing this Perhaps all day long. at some time. Or we'll putting it on her thing. In the past. And some toys for her and jewelry, too. I would like a T-shirt, a Creature Features T-shirt. Thank you from Miss Lisa. All right, so the T-shirts, they're, they're built by somebody. We don't even have any T-shirts here, right? Not here. No, no. They're built, you know, I think they're actually built in Australia. And they ship out of Australia. Anyways, we can't send you a T-shirt, but we will send you an autographed photo. Hopefully that will suffice, right? Hopefully. All right, well, make sure you put that aside for a photo. And thank you so much, Lisa Marie. Next up, Mr. Livingston. Kelly Purdy. Kelly Purdy. Sent How are you, email. old man? I'm fine and not old. You know, he's so old that, that old people call him sir. It's a true story. True story. Look, he's even smiling. Kelly Purdy, she does not say from where. Oh, here, here we go. Uh, hello, Vincent Livingston, Tangela, and Andrew. Where is Andrew? Working. He does that sometimes, does he? Not enough. Yeah. Right. See the one who put the chicken? I believe he did. What's up with this chicken? Is that one of your chickens? I don't know why we even have one. Well, it's... I think it's gone to meet its maker. Pushing up the daisies. It's certainly not laying any eggs anymore. All right. Uh, my family and I live in the UK, and we stumbled across your show on YouTube during the COVID lockdowns. What in God's name is a COVID lockdown? I'll explain it to you later. We've been watching regularly since then. What I mean is we watch multiple episodes of your show every day. Can you believe that? Now, you need to get out. If you live in the UK, there's nice places for you to go. Uh, in fact, some days Creature Features is all we watch. Anyhow, it's my dad's birthday on October 14th. Uh-oh. I think we got this letter a little late, or she sent it a little late. Well, we're a bit late on the uh, birthday thing, and I thought it would be nice surprise if my letter could be read out on your show. Okay, we're reading it on the show, and she didn't even put the bloke's name. It's, uh, I shall I shall assume it's Mr. Purdy. 
right? It's, might be a good guy. Mr. Purdy, happy birthday. Happy belated late birthday, Mr. Purdy. We hope things are going wonderful in the UK. She didn't even tell me where in the UK she is. It's like saying, hello, I'm from the USA. Well, ah. Of course you're from the bloody USA. Where in the USA? But uh, UK, I'm sure you live in a wonderful place. And thank you so much for writing. And happy birthday, Dad. Next up, Mr. Livingston. Another package. Another package. Good Lord. From St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis. St. Lou. St. Louis. Oh, my goodness. This is full of all kinds of trinkets. You sure this is St. Louis? Or I suppose it is. Rita Schneider. That's a German name, right? Schneider means tailor in English. Means tailor? Yes. One who makes or alters clothing? Let her she makes clothing. contend with this. And I shall read the note. All right. She goes, uh, hi, we love your show. And my dog and I are big fans. Yeah, I've never I've never known Good dogs dog. to be fans of our show. Hmm. Yeah, there's a thing called dog TV. No, there's Yes, not. it's a, called dog TV, and it's just for dogs. And the bloke who came up with this idea is like a, a multi-billionaire now. Because so many dogs subscribe. It's like Netflix for dogs. Canine Netflix. I find that. Difficult I to bet believe. she would watch it. All right. Uh, we love your show, and my dog and I are big fans, and we hope to get a photo of all of you. Your show makes us happy. From your big fans and with love, Rita Schneider, Ann Hyman, Remain, and Vinny. Well, we will ship that out to you right away, and thank you so much. And what are the gifts that she sent? Some oh, pen nice. pennants from St. Louis. Right. Now there's a sporting pennants and maps of the city of maps St. Louis. in case we go and nice nice glass are those for me or for you they're for me and a couple of pairs oh, of those these are quite fetching shades several pairs how many oh you got a set two oh, no right. i'm gonna close that with that let's see how that looks oh that's the most fashionable it's rather stylish well, thank you. yes all right that's it for letters if you'd like to send us up a letter by email or a wonderful package of gifts, go to hellocreaturefeatures.com and at that site you will find out exactly what you must do to send us those items, right? They can also send us like books or they can send us automobiles, right? Postcard. Postcards. How about large trucks full of produce? We have a garden. All right, we've got a garden, so no produce, but everything else is good to go. We'll be uh, right back with Miss Boo, but first let's get back to our film. Don't go away. Wow. Wow, shall I say it uh, looks lived in? Yes, by vampires. <sighs> and truthfully, don't you feel more comfortable now that we have our little business relationship? I mean, you look after me, and, and I look after you, and... Right. And with no romantic involvements. No romantic involvements, because that way people might get hurt. We couldn't let that happen, could we? Right. Uh, I think I better go change now. Lily. Really, don't you think? I have to go. And don't forget, you don't have this business relationship with anybody else except me. Right. Business, they say. Monkey business, I say.
a nervous lot. All squiggling in unison. They're not squiggling, they're dancing. Get with it, Poppy. Hey, hi, Aunt Myrtle. Oh, hi, Aunt Myrtle. Hey, you know, this is a real swinging place you've got here. Well, I'm glad you like it, Goo Goo. The joint might be ours after tonight. Happy to see you're enjoying yourself, young man. Oh, uh, Mr. Ripper, this is Miss Vicki Oren. Hello. And a young exchange student from Italy, Miss Piccola Peak. Poopa. Oh, pardon me. Poopa. Oh, <laughs> I was uh, telling your aunt that I should like you to meet my daughter. Oh, he'd like to meet anybody's daughter. What's that? Oh, that's um, a subsonic whistle. It can only get through to people with a, an acutely developed sense of hearing. Uh -huh. Your daughter is acutely developed? Well, judge for yourself. She's acutely developed, all right. That's my little girl. You called, Daddy, dear? Yes, indeed I did. I want you to meet a very charming young man. Oh, what? Fun. Yes, isn't it? But first, we want to make a good impression, don't we? Oh, yes, Daddy, dear. So we'll um, take our glasses off, won't we? Uh, but when we take our glasses off, uh, we can't hardly see. Remember what I told you about passes and girls with glasses? Yes, Daddy, dear. Oh, you are a very nice young man. No, dear, not him. This very charming young man's name is Bobby. I'm Vicky. He's Miss Forbush's only living relative. I'm Vicky. I am Vicky. Follow me. Oh, anywhere. I'm Vicky. And who cares? The men do seem to like her for some reason. I can think of three reasons. 38, 24, 36. Hey. That's better. Uh, Bobby. Mm. Do you like uh, surprises? Oh, I love them. That's good. Because you've got one coming now, love. Oh, boy. And I bet I know what that is. I bet you don't. Oh. What are you fixing? Relax. It's just orangeade with a couple of my own special ingredients. Uh, how do you like the antique furniture? Oh. Well, I don't know. That's okay. Oh, it's great. It's really great. I bet it goes back to Louis the 15th. Here, Bobby, dear. Once you taste this, you'll never drink anything else. <laughs> Bobby? What? You're not drinking. I mean, I'm not very thirsty. Bobby, your dear sweet aunt is calling you. I think I hear my dear sweet aunt calling me. Oh, that's ridiculous. I have 20, 20, 20 hearing and I don't hear a thing. 20, 20, 20. Yeah, and she's right out on the lawn. Oh, what difference does it make just as long as we're together? Lover? Bobby? Oh, there you are. You are a shy one, aren't you? <laughs> I get it. Uh, you're so happy you're speechless. Come on, drink it. Pretty please? You are a stubborn one, aren't you? Well, I'll take care of that. Down 
try to be indifferent to me. Don't think you're not falling for me. You're standing right on the brink of something bigger than you think. Don't try to fight it, baby. Just take a look into my eyes. It's time you took the trip you're taking to paradise. You know it's bigger than both of us. You'll see I'm a girl you can trust. You're gonna know how it feels You're falling head over heels Don't try to fight it, baby Don't try to fight it, baby You said you didn't smoke. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present Creature Features TV, a curious endeavor offering a surplus of horror, science fiction, and fantasy content. This unique service is compatible with Roku, Apple TV, Fire TV, and various Android devices sparing you the encumbrance of commercial advertising. Your subscription grants you access to a generous content library. Remarkable, isn't it? And as a delightful bonus, your generous membership sponsors the production of Creature Features, a true act of benevolence, I'm sure. No, thank you. Furthermore, you'll uncover a selection of intriguing lost episodes, lost for a reason, I suspect. And for those inclined towards variety, there is also an eclectic assortment of content to dabble in, including a selection of original Bob Wilkins Creature Features episodes and movies never before featured on this program. Lastly, you can indulge in the spectacle from anywhere, be it the comforts of home, or venturing further afield. If your peculiar taste for horror, sci-fi, and fantasy beckons, explore CreatureFeaturesTV.com or not, as you prefer. Thank you for your time. Ghost Girl Boo, who does your hair? <laughs> That's a great question. Who does yours? <laughs> no, I have an entire army of technicians and scientists that put this mess together. Oh, it looks lovely. No, but yours looks nice. How do you get that curly effect? <laughs> Curler. It's revolutionary. <laughs> is it like, Although my hair is naturally no, very curly and wavy. Is it the small things the that you small leave barrel, in your hair? Yes, yes. I, I like to go traditional with so it. So if you, <laughs> if you do not utilize those devices, mm -hmm. what does your hair look like? It's naturally very wavy with little Just curls at the end. So not too different from this. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. That's good, that's good. Anyway, so welcome back to the show. We are watching <laughs> The Ghost in the Invisible Bikini 1966 with Ghost girl boo and so anyways this movie our director tom just informed me that this is the only beach party film 
Not filmed at a beach. Yes, just by the pool. <laughs> Didn't want to travel too far. Well, so it's not really a beach party film. It's a pool party film. Yes. <laughs> and sort of more of a haunted house film, so. Which, of course, I love. <laughs> right. No, no, no. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. So, yes. in all your encounters mm -hmm. with the supernatural. Quite a few, yes. <laughs> what, what's the scariest thing you've ever come across? Oh, dear. I, I don't know if I had a scariest, but definitely up there in the scary realm. Uh, we were doing some work in Columbia, California, and uh, sadly there was a woman and a child that were being uh, kept by uh, their husband and father. He was not a good person in life and sadly didn't learn a lot in death. So we did a crossing. What that means with the wonderful Napa ghosts if, is, if I could just yes, interject here. Absolutely. All these people you're speaking of are dead, right? Correct. All right. So yes. these are, these are ghosts. All ghosts. Right, right. Yes. All, right, all, all right. three are ghosts. Right, That's right. right. And then we, the living, were trying to help them cross. So um, I was known as the runner. I uh, brought them down so that if and when they were ready, they could go to the other side into the light. The runner. Yes, that was, besides Boo, my uh, calling for that day. That sounds like bait. <laughs> You well, everybody, run into the I haunted always house. volunteer as tribute. I'm the sacrifice. You run into the haunted house. Yes. You track the ghosts. Yes. And then you go running out. And, and help them when they're ready, yes. And they walked hand in hand into the light. It was very sweet. And you can actually perceive, see this. Correct, and feel it, yes. And what's the light look like? It's, they always say it's beautiful. Well, you saw it. You, you yes. should be able to tell me. So it's beautiful in what way? Is it just like? like it, a... it just is very peaceful and calming. You feel loved and right. supported, like you're right. going home. Right. Yes. Right. So, so when somebody says, don't go in the light. <laughs> well, in this case, it was a good thing. <laughs> right, right. But that's confusing because, you know, if it's so, like, wonderful. Yes. And somebody says, don't go in the light. Yeah, they weren't ready. Right. But <laughs> how do you know that that person's not? like fibbing. Sure. Oh, they'll definitely let you know. <laughs> they'll so, let you know when they're ready to go. So that was the scariest encounter you've had. That was one of them because the gentleman did not want to let them go. So he was causing quite a ruckus. He was setting off our meters. He was getting up in people's faces. Um, he was screaming. So not a happy character as we were escorting the young woman and little girl out. Screaming? Yes. Ghost screams. <laughs> what do those sound like? Very ethereal and spooky, as you can imagine. <laughs> no, I, I can certainly imagine. Is it like, like a, a an animal scream, or is it like? Yes, a we human had a growl scream? the other day when we were investigating the ride a hotel. Growl? Yes, which is not very polite. <laughs> we tried to teach them to be more respectful. Do ghosts have bad breath? <laughs> I haven't noticed myself, but maybe they've just been more generous. Well, yeah, they spend all the time screaming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, some of them do, not all. <laughs> all right, we're going to talk more about ghost breath in a minute. <laughs> but I'm going to signal we got to get back to this film. And um, uh, when we come back, we're going to talk some more about ghosts and the bad breath. <laughs> See you soon. Welcome, Princess. I'm Reginald Ripper. Mr. Ripper, I assumed as much. You're like a giant among men. Shrewd, forceful, dominating, and rotten, too. <laughs> if you please, Princess, time is of the essence. Oh, by all means, Mr. Ripper. I think we're like birds of a feather. Vultures, that is. <laughs> Heavens, what's that? Oh, just Monstro. Come on, I'll introduce you to him. Hey, Monstro! <laughs> Shut up, Monstro. Well, we might only be gone a little while. Princess, did you have to bring that monkey with you? How many times have I told you? When you do a job for me, park this peanut grinder in a zoo or something. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Uh, oh, come on. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. He's really as gentle as a kitten, oh. except when he's scared or when he thinks somebody's oh. threatening me. Oh. Now, you behave, Monstro, and everything's going to be all right. Well, shall we? 
What's that way, Princess? This calls for discretion. My four unwanted guests. I assume Mr. Hulk explained what you're to do. Him make broad hint. <laughs> Follow me. No, on this way go. Here she is. My princess. I love her. Who them tree slop, boss? I don't know. But one of them looks like Sherlock Holmes. Hey, Prince! <laughs> Where, where's my princess? She went right through the wall. Oh, right through the wall. Where did she go? She, she went went right through the wall. Shut up! Jerome, tell me the truth. Where is she? Jerome, tell me the truth, and nothing's gonna happen to you. Where did she go? Right through the wall. Don't ever lie to your leader. He ain't lying, boss. Shut up, you two. Show me. Show me, you stupids. Show me. walk through a stone wall. That ain't even human, uh, right? Boss, I think Shut up. Was... Shut up. I'm thinking. Now, the last time I seen her, she was standing over there with them three slobs, right? right? What she probably did was she walked around the uh, side boss, of the house. I, I, I warned you. I warned you. I warned you. Don't talk. Don't talk when I'm thinking. But, boss, I... Shut up. You I told to shut up. Once more, J.D. Just once. Now, what we the boss is gonna think we pushed him. Ooh, is he gonna be mad? It's gonna be madder if we don't go pick him up. Get in there! Well, that's more like it. Now that we've formed our mutual protection society, we may as well be friendly. I'm not being friendly, I'm being scared. Ah, uh, there's nothing to be scared of, not with me here. Oh! Nice try! Nice throw! Look, let's not be dopes and fall into the trap, huh? Someone's just trying to scare us out of here before the reading of the will. Somebody's trying to kill us. Look, I'm going back to the house. Wait a minute, I'll go with you. Please, sir. I must talk to you. Sure. Sure. We'll have a nice long talk as soon as you learn some manners and stop throwing hatchets at people. No, no, I'm not responsible for any of the actions that have been taking place here. Oh, of course not. I've seen it. I know all the dialogue. You want me to leave this house, right? Exactly, sir. Well, I'm not. I'm going to be here at midnight when the will is read, and I'm going to be here tomorrow when the money is divided. If you must, sir, I beg you, be careful. Someone here is trying to kill you. And you know his name, right? Indeed I do, sir. And you're going to say, and his name is... And a phony knife is going to stab you in the chest. And you're going to roll up your eyes and make believe you're dead. Don't make sport of me, sir. I'm trying to save your life. I'm sorry, sir, but I've got a girl to follow. So long. Somebody is trying to kill you. His name is... <laughs> How I ever allowed myself to be hoodwinked into having him for my attorney is beyond me. And with that phony British accent. Oh, surely there must be something better for me to look at. If my mother could see me like this... Don't you think we're overdoing it? Just a little? In case like this, in my country we say, Se devi avere un amore, devi lottare col tuo cuore. What does that mean? Stand up and fight for what you think is right. Don't let anyone get in your way. Hey, hey, hey. Write down to the letter. You're gonna feel better. It's true. Just do what I say. Hey, hey, hey. Stand up and fight for what you think is right. Yo 
for you, but it's too far out for me. I think I'll settle for this. You gotta fight fire with fire, honey. Wear the bikini. It's just what the doctor ordered. On second thought, this might be just what the doctor ordered. Oh! What do you do, you little woodwork? Boss, you keep telling me this joint ain't haunted. Well, explain some of them screwy things that are going on, like that self-propelling candelabra. No time for that now. Do you realize it's nine o'clock? And so far, not one single casualty. I'm going to read the will in three hours. Well, that's life, boss. It takes doing. Well, do it. Go on, get in here. Get back. Get back. Ah, Mr. Ripper. I'm so glad you introduced little Bobby to Sinistra. She's so sophisticated and everything. She'll give him just what he needs. Would you mind if Bobby and I went out for a while? Mm -hmm. I'd uh, like to show him the sights. The sights aren't that bad right here. Oh, the city, I mean. I have uh, something special in mind. <laughs> Why, of course, dear. Uh, where do you want to go? Oh, just out on the veranda. It's so romantic and uh, so high. <laughs> The people look like uh, crawling insects below. Why, that'll be perfectly all right. Just don't stay out too long. Oh, this won't take long at all. Uh, good night, Papa. Well, good night, you happy hunting. I mean, uh, uh, have a good time. what you get in high places? Well, oh. listen, whatever you get, that's what I got. Now, you just stay there a minute. I want to make sure this is the place. You hoo Goo goo. I think I hear my dear Aunt Myrtle calling me. This is the place. Silly boy. Playing games, are you? Why don't you ever learn to relax? Here, I'll massage your neck muscles for you. Ooh, aren't you built? Your poor muscles are so tense and so tight. But Sinistra knows how to relax you. Permanently. <laughs> One less finger in the jam pot. Won't Papa be delighted? Hi, my name is Nicole. I'm seven years old, and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Me and my dad watch your shows, and I think so far it's really good. I've only watched two episodes, so me and my, oh, my dad's watched eight million. I think everybody has a great outfit, and it's very cool. Meanwhile, um, Angela looks very nice sometimes. See you then. Bye. Hello, 
this is Livingston. Apparently, one of my newly acquired domestic duties is to request help for our show financially by asking you to visit our patron page. Your generosity will help keep Creature Features on the air, which I'm not entirely sure is a good thing. However, with only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new programming each week, which apparently some of you curiously enjoy. And should you have the desire to give even more, you might even receive a gift from Ms. Tangela. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. So this, I think, is an antique. It's beautiful. It was. I paid antique prices for it. You see, there's two <laughs> faces. Yes. Mm -hmm. How extraordinary. It is extraordinary. Welcome back. We're watching The Ghost in the Invisible Bikini with Ghost Girl Who. I couldn't think of a better guest for oh. a film about invisible bikinis <laughs> and ghosts. Yeah, you should have came in an invisible bikini. Oh, not quite my repertoire. I'm yeah. more of the long gown now, type. Now, was wearing one, <laughs> and I could not even see it. Oh, she is so over, talented. It was over her regular clothes, and yes. I could not see it, so it was definitely invisible. <laughs> to uh, us, yes. <laughs> right, but this film, I don't know. The invisible part seems Well, peculiar. they certainly tried their best, and that's all they that matters. Did, they did. <laughs> well, they didn't try their best in this film, because this film <laughs> should have had Frankie Avalon and Annette Funicello. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to do the beach body movie... That's, that those two need to be in it. Absolutely. Uh, maybe, Next time. <laughs> I suppose they told them that Boris Karloff and Basil Rathbone oh. were going to be in the film, and that frightened them off. Oh, dear. Yeah, those guys are two classics. <laughs> he was, uh, what's his uh, head? Boris Karloff was uh, Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. The Frankenstein, not yes. like all the phony ones that came afterwards, but the real one. <laughs> the original, yes. The original. <laughs> all right, so speaking of original. Yes. What uh, other ghostly encounters have you Absolutely. had? Absolutely. One of my favorites. It was the day that I met Ellen and Devin on the Napa Ghost Tour. Right. I know them. Yes. Uh, so I actually got to experience knowing them two hours before I officially did, thanks to ghosts. <laughs> okay. Yes. So I usually when I would uh, visit a ghost tour, I show up an hour or two early, just walk around, see if there's any spirits that'd like to talk to me. Usually they're very funny about saying, okay, this is what they're going to say, but here's the real deal. But when I showed up in Napa, they were talking to me right away, right as I walked out of the car. There was the morning lady in black by the church. Um, wasn't a talker, but I respect her opinion. And then uh, we started talking to a judge who ended up being on the tour. And uh, oh, you're referring to ghosts, right? All now, ghosts, right? yes. Just walking around Napa. <laughs> Are they there for the wine? What, Come what for the wine, stay for the spirits is their motto. <laughs> right, but the ghosts? Oh, they, they were just more than happy to talk. They were used to it. So what does a ghost tell you? Yes, so they were telling me that I would love Devin and Ellen. They're the real deal and that we would be good friends. And I, I of course, didn't tell them this until years later. <laughs> so they were endorsed by ghosts. Correct, before I met them. You know, I've seen their marketing <laughs> materials and I've never we seen add that in. a slogan that says endorsed by Napa ghosts themselves. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's the ultimate endorsement, I mean, right? you can't get better than that. <laughs> All right, so that was not a spooky encounter. No, it was a very happy one. Well, besides Billy Give Rowe, the serial grisly. killer. All, all viewers at home. <laughs> they want more spooky, sure. No, so they want to hear something more sinister. Sure, so Billy Rowe is on the tour. He introduced himself to me as William, and he was somewhat polite, but I could tell something was not quite right about him. He just seemed to uh, have this sort of eerie presence. And on the tour, I learned that he is a serial killer and that he was the last public execution in the state of California by hanging. 
1897, right in front of the courthouse. And so, how does Nick look? <laughs> he looks the way that he perceives himself, and he's a bit of an egomaniac, so he mm. likes to present himself very well. So, Doesn't have the rope around or anything. So perhaps fashionable clothing. And well, in his period of time, cane, yes. <laughs> a top hat, maybe. Not so formal, yeah. but maybe one of right, these days right. we'll have to Nicely talk to him. Nicely hair. <laughs> perhaps a, a perfectly shaved goatee. I mean, if you can change your appearance, you might as well. <laughs> It's interesting. I want to talk more about death when we come back, but let's go back to the film, yes. have a commercial break, and then we come back, we're going to talk about death. See <laughs> Happy you <soon>. subject. <laughs> yes. See you soon. No, it can't be. Bobby. Bobby. Oh, no. No! No! Why do you Because I'm afraid. Don't be afraid. And don't no more, huh? What are you doing out again? Twelve bongs right in my ear. It's smart. Never mind that now. I thought I made it clear to you and your wretched crew that you were to dispose of everybody before I read the will. Well, we want to, but nobody stays put long enough. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Now, don't let me have to tell you again. Go on, get in there and get on with it. Give on. Oh. Oh! Well, you're all comfortable? Let's get started, shall we? <clears throat> I, Harab Stokely, being of sound mind and body, uh, look, suppose I skip all the, excuse the expression, dead stuff. What? what? And get down to the bequests. That's what you're waiting for. I um, happen to know everything that's in this instrument because I drew it up myself. All Mr. Stokely's earthly possessions are to be divided up among the four of us Share and share alike. Yay! Not bad. It would be a good deal better if I knew where the money was. Yeah. What? I'm trying to tell you, the man had no bank accounts. As of this moment, the whereabouts of the money is a complete mystery. Oh! Oh! Then why? Why did you have to drag me all the way here from Lompoc? I hate to sound mercenary, but could you give us an estimate? I can do even better than that. I can tell you exactly. By cheating, horn-swoggling, finagling, stealing, and perpetrating every neighbor known to man, the old horse thief accumulated one million dollars. What happened? Uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, 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 let's get on with it. shorted by the storm. Oh. Ah! 
What's that? It's a codicil. A codicil? Yeah, in addition to the will. Um, it seems to be legal. It's uh, dated and signed by Mr. Stokely. Well, what's it say? It just says that uh, the million dollars is uh, concealed somewhere in the house and uh, it's up to us to find it. Oh, no. Now we have to go on a treasure hunt. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes, uh, here's a... Here's a clue. Look to the Prince of Love. Look to the Prince of Love? What does that mean? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Um, I suggest that we all turn in and uh, have a good go at it in the morning. Well, uh, I'll turn in, but I don't know how I'm going to sleep with all that's been going on. Oh, don't worry, honey, don't worry. I never go to a haunted house without a large supply of sedatives. Oh. Must be Stokely's idea of good, clean fun. Oh. Once a showman, always a showman. Please, just let's go. Oh. Oh. Haunted. Will you explain to me what's going on out there? Suppose you explain to me what's going on in here. Everybody's still alive and you have the effrontery to sit here eating by candlelight? Well, don't blow a gasket, boss. They come a long way. They're starved. After all, sweet, you can't expect us to do what we have to do on an empty stomach. Indian tradition. Never go on warpath before first eating buffalo. Buffalo smuffalo. You heard me read the will, didn't you? Yeah, buried treasure, and we expect our cut of it, too. Well, you can expect until doomsday. Nobody's been knocked off around here except Malcolm the butler. And I took care of him myself, and my daughter's taking care of that upstart Bobby. <laughs> you hear that, Chicky? They got two expert caretakers Quiet. here now. <laughs> Mr. Ripper have tradition, too. No do job, no get wampum. Put that in your teepee and smoke it. <laughs> I'm steaming. I'm, I'm so exaggerated. What's the matter? I'm mad on that princess. What'd you do, boss? The only girl I ever loved. And now she and them tree slobs are gonna steal a million clams from them folks. And they didn't even invite me. Well, why don't you give her the finger, boss? No. No, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna find them clams and we're gonna keep them for ourselves. And we ain't gonna share with her nor nobody. Huh? How are you gonna do that, boss? Uh -oh. Don't worry. He knows how we're gonna do it. <laughs> How are we going to do it, boss? How? Yeah. That's a good question. I'll tell you how is how. Who told you to ask me that question? Anybody tell you? Did anybody tell you? No. Shut! Oh. Shh. Oh. Don't bite. Let go. Hi! Hi! <laughs> Just me. I'm the only shusher. Thanks for talking to me, Chuck. I, I feel a lot better now. You know, this is the wildest coincidence that both our fathers were carnival operators and both were swindled by a con man. Maybe it isn't a coincidence. Stokely. That's his name. I remember. That's the name of the crook. Stokely. Yeah, yeah. Rings a bell with me, too. But if this is the same Stokely who was the culprit, then why would he be our benefactor now? Search me? Anyway, it'll, it'll clear up tomorrow. Good night, Lily. Uh, business arrangement. Well, that's my room over there, just in case. In case anything happens. Oh, OK. Good night, Jack. Hey, the 
guys are a little crowded over there in the other bedroom, so I figured you wouldn't mind if I bunked here tonight. Oh, no, I don't mind. Okay, great. I was just ready to hit the sack myself. Be my guest. Television repairmen. Andrew has a doll as well. Just trying to read myself to sleep. Thanks. What time is it? Uh, I don't know. It's two o'clock. right there a minute ago. I don't understand it. Well, I understand. Anybody reading junk like this is bound to have nightmares. Go to sleep, will you? Ow. Oh, for crying out loud. Now I'm gonna have to take something or I'll never get to sleep. Something dastardly afoot. Be brave, boys. Have courage. excited about. Bobby just had a nightmare, that's all. Where, where is Bobby? He, he went downstairs to get some warm milk. Oh, now, come on, kid. You're all acting like a bunch of old women. Scat, dig up. Come on. Come on. Hello, hello, 
operator. This is a recording. You have dialed a wrong number, stupid. I haven't dialed any number yet. Look, this is an emergency. Bobby, no. No! Oh! Thanks, loads. What's that? I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, keep away from that door. It's a real son of a gun. I thought I had voices saying words. Carry on. Doing with books. Here, rip! Come. He won't open his mouth. He's dead, stupid. Jerome E. Yeah. You see anything in the mirrors? Yeah. What? Dirt. You oh. stupid. Hey, come in. Stop. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Listen. Whoever hid that loot was pretty sharp. But if he thinks he can outshop Eric Von Zipper, he is stupider than anybody. You said it, boss. There ain't nobody stupider than you. Now stand back. Just stand back. I think there's something here. This time, it's what I don't think. And what I don't think is, I don't think the loot is in this room. I wish I'd said that. <laughs> Tell us what we should do, boss. Well, look, we got a pretty good hole dug here, right? right? Right. So it shouldn't be a total loss. Let's see what it leads to. I knew you'd come up with something, boss. <laughs> OK, let's go. Ladies first. That's you two. Oh. Come on, stupids. Let's go. Let's go. In there. Be careful. And wait for me, you guys. Wait for me in there. Don't go too far. Come on, come on. Wait for me now. I can't back. I you, can't back. You stupid. Now, now, oh. now. Watch your head. Oh. Don't let me poke out your eyes. Oh. OK, here I come, fellas. Not to worry. What? I thought I told everybody to go in the hole. Oh. Ah! 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 Hey, boss. Boss, what's wrong? I heard you screaming. What's your... There was a... There was a... There was a... And he gave you a whole rap. And he was there. Hey, wake up. Wake up, boss. Wake up. Wake up. There's a... There's a... There's a... Did you... Me? Yeah? Don't ever. Me. Now get in the hole. Get in the hole. Everybody here. We are safe as the First National Bank. Now, look, we can't possibly do anything more about this tonight, so why don't we get some shut-eye, huh? Shut-eye? Are you kidding me? Look, twice that, uh, that, that homicidal Philly sinister tried to knock me off, and that blob, he wasn't any fraternity brother either. The only blob is in your brain. No, OK, then look, Chuck, you tell me, who wrecked the living room, huh? Look, I told you, it's only somebody trying to get a head start in finding old Stokely's dough. What's to worry? Listen, do you believe in helping a dying man? Huh? Yes. Okay. 
I'm dying. Now, go downstairs, pick up the phone, and call the cops, please. All right. I wonder what monster you'll dream up next. Store.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature Accessories. Do you know, Ghost Girl Boo, this is beginning to look a lot like an episode of Scooby-Doo. I was thinking the exact same thing. You know, all we need is for the mask to be pulled off, right? That's all we need, right. and then it's an exact episode. Yeah. All right, well, you know, they, they used the Columbo approach, right? Because we know who the bad guy is at the beginning. Right at the beginning. Right. They give so us that little spoiler. The whole story <laughs> is how they figure out who the bad guy and is. And where the money is hidden, absolutely. You know, money, you know, money can make you rich. Who needs that? <laughs> no, you, you, you're rich. You're rich in stories. Rich in about spirit. Ghosts and spirit. <laughs> yes. So, in last segment we talked about uh, you telling us about death. Tell yes. us everything you know about death. What happens on the other side? A question of the ages. No, no, no. I want to know a step by step. Sure. All right. Somebody dies. Then mm -hmm. what happens? Well, that's certainly up to them. So there are well, many that... Hey, yes, no, yes, I'm going to yes. stop you right there. Okay. How is it up to them? <laughs> they can decide if and when they're ready to cross All over. Right. So I die <laughs> and I'm going to wake up at the front of the line at Disneyland. If you so choose. I actually have been to Disneyland and it's very haunted. <laughs> All right. If you're so, ever bored in line, just talk to the spirits. The traditional, the traditional death. Somebody yes. who says, I don't know what I want to do, what happens? Sure. So if they choose, they can just go right to the other side, learn their lessons. Those that choose not to cross for any reason, be it fear or uh, scared of being punished or just not knowing the unknown, they can choose to stay as a spirit or a ghost. And... Over time, they may start to lose some of their memory, and it can be a very tricky experience. After a while, they have trouble going to the light, and that's where mediums and uh, paranormal investigators are there to help. So, they become a ghost. If right? they choose, yes. If they choose, <laughs> they become a ghost. Yes. And they have to go find a haunted house, right? Not necessarily. They there can is go a somewhere room to let, right? <laughs> they can just go somewhere that was their haunt in life, somewhere that meant a lot to them. Oh, no. But, so if a ghost goes and lives in a normal house, mm -hmm. it's now a haunted house. It now is, yes. Many it's of them like, are. <laughs> oh, I've blessed your home with a haunting. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? A that new friend. Nice. <laughs> all right. So, so all right. What I, what I meant to say, though, is... Once they go into the light, what happens? Yes, so uh, there's debates, but one is that they're reunited with their loved ones, that they learn lessons to try to help them be a better spirit and right. person, and uh, that hopefully they have a very happy time. One would hope. One would hope. <laughs> one would hope. Well, you know my theory. I would love to hear it. My theory is that when you go, yes, 
all of a sudden you open your eyes and your friend is taking off the virtual reality mask and saying, wasn't that fun? It was a simulation. <laughs> That's what Another I think. theory in the field, absolutely. That's what I think, and that explains <laughs> ghosts and everything. Oh, yes. Just not wrong. quite seen well enough on that VR. Oh, that's right. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this film up, and when we come back, we're going to find out what you're doing next yes. and what kind of adventures you'll be going on, right? Oh, quite a few, absolutely. All right. <laughs> Off we go to the end of the Ghost in the Invisible Bikini. Don't go away at the credits because we're going to have Tangela here to give us her opinion in her actual voice. <laughs> That's a lie. She, she'll never do that. But she'll, she'll indicate her uh, opinion of this film, and uh, it's something you'll want to know. Stick around. Operator, do you hear me now? This is an emergency. Will you please... Sorry. The... You're being disconnected. Why? haircut all over his all. Everybody here? Yeah. 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 Did anybody extra year? Hiram, Hiram. Yes, my dear. What are all these strange people doing here? They're on their way to my chamber of horrors. Oh, 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 oh. Just follow them, my dear.
think this is the rumpus room. I think maybe we took the wrong turn. Gee, it's scary in here. Yeah. Have no fear, my zipper is here. Nothing can hide us. Come on. Whoa! Chick's in big trouble. Von Zipper will save you, ma'am. Uh, uh, you heightened that chick, Charlie. Leave her be. I, I, I don't think he hiked me so good. I said you heightened that chick, Charlie. Leave her be. Give it to him, boss. You can do it. Yeah, he asked for it. Keep your eye on Von Zipper. He's hurt. <laughs> Never be the same without plastic surgery. Is he bleeding? You bunch of stupids. This ain't a human being. It's a dummy. Just like you are. Dummies. Oh, well, then they won't give us no more trouble then, right, boss? Right. But I will. Now, come on. Here's your head back, mister. Hey, look at the monkey. He looks real. Oh, no. You can always tell a phony. Look, you see the kind of hair they got here? And over here, it happens to be different. Look at that. You see the kind of hair they got here? Ah! Ah! I thought the geese were real. Yeah, you said nothing was going to hurt us. So I'm a liar. Us. We better get out of here while we still got our health. Yeah, me too. I go. You want to keep your health? We'll let you finish the job. We're going to find out what's going on in that chamber of horrors. So move. Uh, Mr. Ripper, you've been Mr. Ripper. Ripper. Keep moving. Look at that. It's on me until I let them. Now that goes through, my fine feathered friend. It's a chicken. Always a chicken. Come on. Get moving. Move. 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 Chuck?
Hey, this one's breathing. Oh! 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 Stop that buzzsaw! Cecily, Cecily, save the girl. Goo Goo, do something. <laughs> Treasure, Hiram. Manna oh, from heaven! Oh, no, it isn't. That stroke makes millions. He said 
look to the Prince of Love. Cupid's little arrow did the trick. <laughs> Cecily, do something. Every penny of it is mine. Cecily, Cecily, what have you done? Wrapping things up for you, Hiram, baby. Your wicked lawyer has gone to collect his just desserts, and your rightful heirs now have the money. Congratulations, Hiram, on doing your good deed. And now, you're on your way to heaven. Yippee! Ow! Oh. Oh. Cecily, they said they'd make me young again. And they never go back on their promise. Ah. Well, you can't have everything. Why me? Why me all the time? television repairman. And that brings the curtain down on the ghost in the invisible bikini. Do you like it? Again? I see you took your bikini off. No, it's, it's getting too cold to wear an invisible bikini because they're not as warm as regular bikinis, so I'm told. Anyways, this film, what bothers me about the end of this film is the little boy who Boris Karloff becomes. The actor 
does nothing. He looks like he's frozen. Scared, poor dear. Is that it? Yes. <laughs> and you think he's scared because they made him sit with a beautiful woman or because he's probably never acted before? Probably the latter. Right, yes. right, yeah. But mm -hmm. he did his best and that's all yeah. okay. <laughs> like he, was, he was speechless. I mean, yeah. she's the same way when the cameras come on. She won't say oh, anything, yes. right? She's very sweet no. and shy. <laughs> she's not shy at all. She's just <laughs> petulant. <laughs> This is not shyness Aww. she's doing. This is petulance. She's lovely, just like you. <laughs> no, you're too kind. What are you doing next? Yes. So in December, we will be having a Krampus event at the Napa Valley Distillery. Krampus. Krampus versus Santa and lots of um, booths that will be sending some haunted oh, items fun. and Perfect for the holidays. I've been to one of your parties and there's something else. Oh, there's absolutely. So much fun. Yes. So much spirit there. And absolutely. you're doing it at the... Uh... Napa Valley Distillery. Yes. <laughs> no, so nobody needs to make a booze run there because they no, build... They make the... You can see how spirit. it's done. Absolutely. Right? Yes. No, how fun. And this is December... Yes. Uh, this is early December early 11th. December. Yes. Details... <laughs> Details, details, to to be, details to follow. Details to follow. All right. So to find out, we go where? NapaGhost.com. NapaGhost.com. And if somebody goes to this event, they can meet you. Yes. They can. And meet, one of my forms is Boo. Absolutely. They can meet Ellen and Devin, the Napa Ghost Hunters. Oh, yes, the best of the best. And then a whole slew of other ghost hunters. Wonderful vendors. Yes. Right. Right. And vendors. Right. Yes. No, they have some amazing things for oh, sale. Absolutely. Right. Creepy doll type things. Like oh yes. Dolls with the eyes gouged out and crayons <laughs> sticking out or things like this no fun stuff and then things with bones oh can't forget those bones yes. like little tiny skeleton animal things <laughs> yeah they're interesting yeah. <laughs> all right well thank you so much for coming on the show you were absolutely wonderful oh, it's been a pleasure thank and you so much we need much. to get you to come clean this place sometime because we've, we've got a small ghost problem here. oh yes oh, anytime especially with this one. Oh, the lovely oh, lady good in Lord. Blue. No, i'll be happy to talk to her she's a pain in my backside just needs a little No, time. she's all right. She's just, <laughs> the noise is in the middle of the night. You know, I, I don't sleep as well as she does. Anyways, thanks again. We'll see you next time. As far as you guys go, thank you so much for staying up and watching our program instead of the Pink Panther. We know the Pink Panther is a better show, but at least you got to hear ghost stories. And there was no ghost stories in the Pink Panther. <laughs> and that makes you wonderful and the Pink Panther not so much. Anyways, we'll see you next week. Don't forget, we love you. So, uh, Ghost Girl Boo, I was thinking, if I were to become someday a ghost myself, what do you think I would look like? Maybe Slimer from Ghostbusters? <laughs> <laughs>